Hello everyone. I am Dr. Deepika Malik and today's topic of discussion is production of probiotics. At the start of the 20th century, Russian Nobel Prize winner and father of modern immunology, Elie Metchnikoff, a scientist at the Pasteur Institute, was the first to conceptualize probiotics. Probiotics term was coined in 1965 by Lilly and Stillwell. In early 1930s in Japan, Minoru Shirota developed a fermented milk product called Yakult. In 1935, he started marketing Yakult as a probiotic yogurt-like product made by fermenting a mixture of skimmed milk with a special strain of Lactobacillus casei Shirota. Shirota is the name of the strain here. Probiotics, which means for life, was meant to contrast antibiotics properly prescribed and known to also destroy beneficial organisms and impact the immune system. Probiotics are bacteria that help maintain the natural balance of organisms that is microflora in the intestines. During a delivery through the birth canal, a newborn picks up the bacteria, bacteroids, bifidobacterium, lactobacillus and escherichia coli from his or her mother. The normal human digestive tract contains about 400 types of probiotic bacteria also called as gut flora, microflora or beneficial bacteria that reduce the growth of harmful bacteria and promote a healthy digestive system. The largest group of probiotic bacteria in the intestine is lactic acid bacteria of which Lactobacillus acidophilus found in yogurt with live cultures is the best known. Yeast is also used as a probiotic substance. Probiotics are also available as dietary supplements. Now let us see some important definitions. Probiotic. The term probiotic comes from the Latin word pro which means before or forward and bios which means life. Thus probiotics are life promoting. In this case we use the term probiotics to refer to beneficial bacteria. According to the currently adopted definition by Food and Agriculture Organization and World Health Organization, probiotics are live microorganisms which when administered in adequate amounts confer a health benefit on the host. Human body is full of bacteria both good and bad. Probiotics are often called good or helpful bacteria because they help keep your gut healthy. Probiotics are thought to help restore the natural balance of bacteria in our gut including our stomach and intestines when it has been disrupted by an illness or treatment. Prebiotic comes from the Greek word which means before life is a substance which is usually an oligosaccharide that cannot be digested but does promote the growth of beneficial bacteria or probiotics. Symbiotic which means plus life is a substance containing both a prebiotic and probiotic. Now what are the important characteristics of probiotic for a microbe to be called a probiotic it must have several characteristics these includes being able to be isolated from a human survive in your intestine after ingestion have a proven benefit to body be safely consumed able to survive the passage through the digestive system able to attach to the intestinal epithelia and colonize able to maintain good viability able to utilize the nutrients and substances in a normal diet it should be non pathogenic and non toxic it should be capable of excreting a beneficial effect on the host now how do probiotics work the main job of probiotics or good bacteria is to maintain a healthy balance in your body by supporting digestion immune function and controlling inflammation it helps your body digest food It keeps bad bacteria from getting out of control and making you sick. It creates vitamins. It helps support the cells that line your gut to prevent bad bacteria that you may have consumed through food or drinks from entering your blood. It breaks down and absorbs medications, leads to production of inhibitory compounds, competes for chemicals or available energy, it competes for adhesion sites. enhancement of the immune response improvement of water quality it is a source of macro and micronutrients and gives enzymatic contribution to digestion now what amount of probiotic or its dose is required for its working the definition does not stipulate what an adequate amount is however a minimum dose of 10 raised to power 9 colony forming units is sufficient Furthermore the adequate amount can be assumed to be at least the dose that is documented to provide the specific health benefit for which it is referred 
There is no indication that a higher dose is detrimental in some cases. It may be beneficial only. Now, in what forms a probiotic can be taken? Probiotics come in a variety of forms, including in foods, drinks, capsules or pills, tablets, powders or liquids. Capsules, tablets and powder in stick packaging or sachets are the most commonly found formats on store shelves and are usually stored at ambient conditions. The inclusion of probiotics in dietary supplements primarily utilizes probiotics in the freeze-dried powder format. The next slide shows a schematic representation of the production of probiotics. Now we will discuss all these steps one by one. First step includes the media preparation and sterilization. The heat treated medium used in the seed scale up and main fermentation is a blend of water, nitrogen sources, carbohydrates, salts and micronutrients necessary for growth. Usually probiotic cells are produced by large scale fermentation. It is important to design growth media and change the fermentation technology to improve biomass yield and enhance cell stability. MRS broth is the most widely used medium for cultivation of lactic acid bacteria or bifidobacteria. Higher cell counts of bifidobacterial strains are produced in ultra-filtered skim milk with various protein concentrations or inclusion of milk with nitrogenous substrates such as whey and casein, fractions from human or cow milk. Now next step is the selection of microorganism or our inoculum. Many types of bacteria are classified as probiotics. They all have different benefits, but most come from two groups. First is lactobacillus. This may be the most common probiotic. It's the one we'll find in yogurt and other fermented foods. Different stains can help with diarrhea and may help people who can't digest lactose, the sugar in milk. Bifidobacterium is the, another bacteria that can be used. We can find it in some dairy products. It may help ease the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome and some other conditions. Apart from bacteria, yeast like Saccharomyces boulardii is a yeast found in probiotics. It appears to help fight diarrhea and other digestive problems. The figure on the right side shows the selection criteria for potential probiotics. From the safety criteria point of view, the probiotics should be of human origin, non-pathogenic and resistant to antibiotics. From the functional criteria point of view, they should show resistance against acid and bile conditions. They should have the capability to adhere to mucosal surface. They should be clinically validated and should be known for their health effects. From technological criteria point of view, they should be genetically stable, should have good sensory properties, show phage resistance, large scale production should be possible with them, desired viability during processing and storage should also be shown by them. From physiological criteria point of view, they should show antagonism against enteric pathogens, they should have lactose tolerance, cholesterol assimilation should also be done by them, should show anti-carcinogenic and mutagenic properties that is it should inhibit the development of cancer and they should also have immunomodulation properties. That is, it should have ability to modify the immune response. Now after the selection of the microorganism, next step is its fermentation. Fermentation can be carried out by different methods. For this, membrane bioreactors that has a combination of membrane processes like microfiltration or ultrafiltration attached to the reactor. Some researchers have reported on probiotic cell production in membrane bioreactors. They have supported high cell yields and volumetric productivity. Another method is immobilized cell technology in continuous culture. Although the fermentation technologies such as continuous culture and immobilized cell systems are not common in food industries, they have the potential to improve the role of fastidious probiotic cells. Hence, the physiology and functionality of ingested probiotics can be improved with the implementation of these technologies. It helps to extend the range of commercially available probiotics. In continuous cultures, bacterial cells grow in a fermenter with the continuous supplementation of fresh medium and removal of fermented broth at a given dilution rate. Metabolism, growth rate and gene expression of bacteria of continuous culture can be monitored under constant conditions during long time periods. 
Immobilized cell technology combined with long-term continuous culture can be used to efficiently produce in a one-step process cells with improved tolerance to environmental stresses without the need for preconditioning treatments which are sometimes used for better survival of probiotics during production and use in functional foods but eventually result in reduced cell activity and yield. Now after the fermentation in the main tank is completed, the cells are concentrated by separating the cells from spent medium through centrifugation and filtration. Supernatant that is the fluid obtained after centrifugation or permeate that is the fluid obtained after filtration is discarded and the cells are retained. Next step includes addition of cryoprotectant or lyoprotectant to the separated cells. Depending upon the final product application, stabilize the solutions that is cryoprotectant to protect cells from injury during freezing or lyoprotectants to protect cells from injury during freeze drying may be added to the cells in the concentrate vessel prior to freezing. Cryoprotectants inhibit the rate of ice growth via increasing the solution viscosity and keeping the amorphous structure of ice in close proximity of the cell. Lyoprotectants stabilize the lipid layer structure of the cell membrane in the absence of water. Commonly used cryoprotectants and lyoprotectants are carbohydrates and peptides. In the dairy industry, skim milk powder is often used. Once the probiotic concentrate is blended with the cryoprotectant or lyoprotectant solution, various freezing processes can be applied. So basically to sum up, the cells which are obtained are either mixed with cryoprotectant or they are mixed with lyoprotectant and are then subjected to different freezing processes accordingly. First type of freezing that can be done is cryopreservation. One simple freezing technique consists of pouring cryoprotected concentrate into cans and immersing the sealed cans into a liquid nitrogen bath. The frozen cans can then be shipped to companies incorporating probiotics in food or beverages. Second method that can be adopted is pelletizing. Pelletizing is the process of compressing or molding a material into the shape of a pellet. Alternatively, a more productive technique consists of pelletizing the cryoprotected concentrate by dripping the concentrate through calibrated holes into a bath of liquid nitrogen. The pallets, which are typically spheres of 4 to 5 mm in diameter, are then harvested at the bottom and finally packed into bags that are stored and shipped at a temperature ranging from minus 45 to minus 55 degrees Celsius. Third approach that can be adopted is freeze drying or lyophilization. Alternatively, frozen cell pallets can be used for freeze drying to a dried end product. The frozen pallets are transferred onto trays which are placed on shelves in the freeze drying chamber. The shelves have the capability of being temperature controlled and are progressively heated once vacuum is established in the freeze drying chamber. Freeze drying length varies as a function of the strain, its formulation and the freeze drying cycle but usually takes a few days to be completed. The advantage of freeze drying is that the process maintains the probiotic cells at a low temperature to limit damage to the cell structure and metabolites. Now after the probiotics are ready, they can be stabilized by microencapsulation. Microencapsulation is a technology for packaging solids, liquids or gaseous materials in tiny sealed capsules that can release their contents at controlled rates under specific conditions. Microencapsulation of probiotics in hydrocolloid beads has been found to enhance their viability and activity in food products and the intestinal tract by entrapping the cells inside a bead matrix, thus separating them from harsh environmental conditions as well as protecting them against bacteriophages. A microcapsule consists of a semi-permeable spherical thin strong membrane surrounding a solid or liquid core with a diameter varying from a few microns to one millimeter. Hence, the bacterial cells are retained within the microcapsule. The most widely used materials in microencapsulation of probiotic bacteria include polysaccharides originated from seaweed like alginate and kappa carrageenan, other plants like starch and its derivatives or gum arabic, bacteria like gelin and xanthan, and animal proteins like milk and gelatin. 
Another important point to be considered for the efficient working of the probiotics is its storage. Several probiotic strains are very fragile and need to be protected from heat, oxygen, light and humidity. The probiotics might start to break down or die if they are exposed to these elements. Because of this, you may need to refrigerate your probiotics or store it in a particular place. Refrigerating certain probiotic strains ensures that they are still viable when you go to use them and will still provide the full benefit of the probiotic. Now most often asked question is how safe are probiotics? Because microbes used as probiotics already exist naturally in your body, probiotics foods and supplements are generally considered safe. They may trigger allergic reactions and may cause mild stomach upset, diarrhea or flatulence that is passing of gas and bloating for the first few days after starting taking them. There are certain people who need to use caution when using probiotic supplements. There is a risk of infection in some people. These people include those who have a weakened immune system, especially those going through chemotherapy for example, or people who have a critical illness, recently had surgery. Caution should also be used when giving probiotics to very sick infants. Risks related to probiotics. Probiotics are generally considered safe. However, there are some risks linked to the supplements. These risks are increased if you have a medical condition that weakens your immune system, have recently had surgery or have some serious medical conditions. Unlikely but possible risks can include developing an infection, developing a resistance to antibiotics or developing harmful byproducts from the probiotic supplements. Now let us have a quick review on the production of probiotics. First step includes the media preparation and its sterilization. After that, a suitable microorganism or inoculum is inoculated in the sterilized media within the fermenter. With the addition of the inoculum, fermentation begins. Then after the fermentation is completed, the cells are concentrated by separating them from the liquid broth by centrifugation and filtration. The concentrated cells obtained are then mixed with either cryoprotectant or lyoprotectant. The cryoprotected concentrates are filled into the cans and immersed into liquid nitrogen bath which are then shipped to companies. Alternatively, the cryoprotected concentrate are pelletized, then collected and packed into bags which are stored and shipped at a lower temperature. The cell concentrate which were mixed with lyoprotectants are pelletized and used for freeze drying or lyophilization to get a dried end product. With this, we obtain our end product that is our probiotic which is ready to be used. With this, we wind up our topic of industrial production of probiotics. For any doubts and queries, you can contact me through the given email ID. Thank you.